Okay. I'm not like, again, I don't think we're quite on the necessary necessarily uh, the tier breakdown. I, I think I would still slide ETN into tier one with Najee Harris right now as things stand, but we, we got a long way to go on before we're saying we feel really good about uh, what right. we're saying. Um, so Travis ETN is, is, is his biggest downfall right now being great for so long. Like it just seems like that's something that when you're this good for that long, people start to just nitpick and discredit. Like you've seen it a million times with quarterbacks, be great, stay too long. And then the next year not be good. And it's like, Oh, that guy sucks. And sometimes maybe they figured him out. Travis ETN. There's no figuring him out. He's fantastic. Um, it, what do you think about Travis ETN, Angelo? I think he's the easiest prospect in this class to fall in love with. I mean, you watch him play. I mean, he's the best accelerator we've seen at the position since Chris Johnson. I mean, that's an, that's an absolute fact. He, the guy's phenomenal during early acceleration. But there are major gaps in his game and major flaws. And that's the part of me that's like, okay, like where does he, where does he really sit? The reason why I don't have him in the same tier as Harris is from a holistic standpoint, there's a lot he doesn't do very well at all. He struggles through direct contact. I, I think um, someone put out this thread too. It's really, really interesting. Um, but he turns his shoulders. I was just reading that and that's it's poppy. How, how you can be mad about him avoiding contact? You know, I didn't quite agree with that thread. I think you're talking about. I think it's, no, I, I think he, it's not that he avoids, struggles avoiding direct contact. I think he struggles through direct contact. I think how he manages it, I think is like the way I interpret um, what he's doing. Not just that thread. I thought that there was really interesting. Well, because he had some clips on that thread, right? And and uh, and I forget the guy's name. I hadn't really. It's a Dynasty Nerds guy or something like that. He has it on his little uh, profile. I can't yeah. remember the guy's name. I think it was John John um John Helmkamp, maybe. Yeah, yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I thought it was really. I thought it was interesting. I mean, well, not he that had I agree the clip with all where, it, but yeah, where he was spinning through the, you know, not not going through contact like you said, and it was like I looked at that clip and I was like, he just avoided a big hit, and the guy was trying to say he was going to take a big hit, and I was like. He just avoided a big hit. I, I was kind of confused on watching. It's really that. interesting because a guy like ETN, who is so good during early acceleration, needs to stay square to use his speed as power, right? That's the it, he does it all the time. And he takes unnecessarily big shots because of it. And that's something that I see consistently throughout his game. Is that something he can't clean up? No, he can he can definitely clean that up once he gets to the NFL. But the bigger part of the game that I think is tough is he's a pretty unnatural receiver of the football, right? Him coming back. That was the biggest point he wanted to improve upon. I think he did. He got yeah, better as a absolutely. pass catcher. I, was, I can say nothing about the pass catching. Like he's fine. He's good. Yeah. Is he, I mean, is he, is he line up not... in the slot and draft him as being a fantastic receiver? No, that's probably not what you're doing, but that's not what you're doing with a lot of running backs. He's no. got so many other talents. Like the only other person who caught more balls with him was Jaquarius Marks this year. And he was at Mississippi state and he caught 60, I think, ETN right. about 48 right. or something like that. And literally Mississippi state does not run the football. Like no, they just throw it a million times. And, and ETN doesn't had play. 12.3 a catch. Like and that's a huge right. part of his game at moving forward is that now you can, now there is an advantage of like, Hey, I don't need him to be the best route runner. I just need him to be able to go out, know where to be in the space, catch the ball and do what he does. Right. Exactly. I think for me, you know, it's just, he doesn't have a developer out tree. It's very much like you said, like you get your yards after the catch. And that's fine, right? And as long as he's functional in that area. But if he struggles as a receiver, are you going to be surprised? No, I'm not. But he has made strides in that area. And I think that's an area for me that, you know, you, you did see growth and that's important. Um, I like him as a prospect. I think he's one of those guys that if he gets in the right situation, he's absolutely going to smash. Like if he goes to San Francisco um, oh, sure. in Shanahan's wide zone scheme, that's fantastic but he's going to be pretty landing spot dependent because he doesn't decelerate very well. He he's pretty poor laterally. He's very much a North and South. He's a North and South runner. He sees a gap, he hits the gap and he's, you look down the field and he's 50 yards down, right? That's who he is. Is that a bad thing? No, but that's just who he is as a player and knowing his strengths, weaknesses, is important because if he does go to one of those landing spots that that do implore wide zone and and that's going to be a big part of it, he could he could literally be he has the highest he has a he has the moon and he has the basement 
in terms of his ceiling and floor. The floor isn't great with him, I don't believe. Mm. But the ceiling is the moon. And that's why you're buying ETN at like one, one three to one four, one five, because of the ceiling. Yeah, there's, there's zero chance I'm not buying him at one two for me. Um, yeah, and I I kind of disagree with the floor. I think I think yeah, there's got to be somewhat of a floor here. I mean, uh, real quick, I'll, I'll let you get into it. But I think the difference between Harris and ETN for me is that Harris definitely is a, is not landing spot dependent at all. Where ET's absolute ceiling definitely is a little more team dependent, and that's really kind of sure. where I'm just drawing the line. I'm not, For sure. but I, I agree with Jay Wayne. Sorry to cut you off there. I don't, <laughs> I don't think there's a basement and I think he'll be just like, he's good enough that he's going to be able to figure out how to make your day in one play every pretty much every Sunday. I, I think he could, I think, I think it's definitely, I think that's definitely a possibility, but it's going to be when, right. Is it going to be right off the bat in the NFL? I, or I, is it he, certainly could be. It could be, or is he going to see like a Miles Sanders type ascension where he struggles for the first five, six weeks? Yeah, but and that's yeah, okay. that, they're completely different play. Like that's that's actually that's okay. a great point that I wanted to bring up is like Miles Sanders. You watch him in college, and all he's doing is relying on his athletic ability to to bounce basically every run outside. And when you watch Travis Etienne play, and he's just. He's just taking whatever angle is 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 fastest, right? He's not he doesn't rely on his athletic ability to just constantly bounce runs outside. And now I hear everybody talking about how he has no lateral agility. And it's like, I don't know that he doesn't have any. He just never needs to use it because he's so the, the acceleration and the anticipation, sure. like he's just He's not an ankle breaker, he's an angle breaker because there's no angle you can take to him to 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 bring him down. And, and yeah, I'll give you this. When he gets to the second level, there are times when he could use a little bit of lateral ability to maybe make that guy miss. But half the time he does make that guy miss anyway, because sure. he's moving so fast and he, and he uses that power to just, he's like, I'm either going to get a few more yards here or I'm going to bust you off and then keep going. And he, and he yeah. you know, he's so electric. Um, and, and, and reading stuff, I read, you know, I read your thread on the, on the, um, the Angelo analysis.com uh, who's next. Right. And you were talking about, you know, how he's got a lot of nuances to his game. You use the word nuance a lot. You know, there's lean, there's a slight, the slight lean that he gives you. And then, but then the thing that really stood out to me was the dramatic shifts of torque, right? That's a yeah. way to describe what I'm seeing that I didn't know how to, I couldn't put those words together, but you, that's yeah. such a beautiful string of words, dramatic shifts of torque. And I feel like that comes into play when when he's going through contact because he he can just ski ski yeah. out of the, and, out of that thing and that's the that's a big thing with him is he can do that and he that's one of the parts of the game that's super unique right like for him like his through contact skill set is he has such he's a, he has incredible balance when he Top is accelerating balance, yeah when he is accelerating before that, like during, before early accelerating, like the line of scrimmage, you don't see that same type of balance, right? But when he's moving, when he's accelerating and he gets hit, he can roll off tackles and, and that stuff he does and getting into acceleration after that and re-accelerating tremendous, tremendous job there. The, I think it's so tough to kind of see without knowing where he lands um, because it's, you know, it's it's tough with ETN because he he's so athletically gifted during acceleration, but laterally either you didn't see much, or he doesn't have much. He doesn't. He didn't need to use it. That would be my. See, argument. that's the thing. But we don't know vehemently which one which one though which one that is. I don't. I think it's a combination too. I don't think he has a ton. He does not offer a ton laterally. But he also did not need to. He but, didn't need to use it. But who it in cares? Clemson. But who cares? Like, right. uh, how much where does that he matter? Has, he has that elite. Like, we would absolutely. We crushed that. We crushed people. Crushed David Montgomery because he did too much. It's too much. It's too much of too this. Much it's too much of this. Too much dancing. Every time he does something, we crush Miles Sanders. We crush this guy. We crush that guy because they do that shit too much. Like, I would rather have a guy like Etn who knows what he does. He accelerates, right. like you said, at the one of the most elite levels we've seen in right. a very long time. Put your foot in the ground and go. And like, like Jay Wayne said, like. He fucks your geometry up. Like, <laughs> like that's that's what he does. And yeah, is is he gonna be your between the tackle grind it out? Is he a power no. running back? Does he need to be in a power scheme? No, certainly not. 
And, and I mean, why would anybody draft him to do that? That would be stupid. Like, right. why would you, why would you put him in that position? Like, that's not what you do. That's not what he does. Right. Um, and yeah. I just, I just feel like I would rather have a guy who knows what he does and uses his skill set to his advantage rather than just, um, uh, saying kind of going back to the miles Sanders and uh, like, just it's, it's always it relied so many on jump cuts and moving around and then just being like, I'm the best athlete on the field, you know, try and stop me. I'm going to just keep doing all this nonsense where he just puts ETN just puts his foot in the ground and goes. And yeah, I, he, I kind of compared him a little bit to when Daryl Henderson was coming out. I didn't, similar, like, yeah. I didn't like, I didn't like Daryl Henderson's second level agility. Like it seemed like he ran into contact a lot of the times. Right. Um, and I think ETNs, that's probably the worst part of his game, but ETN's contact balance is better and his acceleration yeah. is probably better. So, you know, sometimes he, he if you're not, if you're not, well, rapping, if you're not wrapping him, Henderson, he's running through that arm tackle. Right. Yeah. He's um, a, he's a fan. Like I said, he's a fantastic prospect. I mean, I, I think uh, he's someone who has an extremely, extremely high ceiling and it's because of his ability as an accelerator. I'd like to see some of those other qualities come up um, and well, see, you know, a little more, I guess, tactical nuance to his game, adding some more, you know, to his toolbox. But I mean, he's going to be a guy who's going to be a late day one, early day two pick, you know, right. he's going to have the capital. Um, but the only really question is where is he landing and how much volume does a guy like that get? Right. He is so explosive. You don't want to run a guy like that into the ground with 18 touches a game. You don't. Mm, and uh that's the tough thing. That's going to be the tough thing. If he doesn't contribute much as a receiver, um, whether it's via scheme or ability, that's going to be hard. See, see to me, that would just be the, the coaching. That would be a coaching issue. Like why, why in the world? You've seen it be, before. Well, well oh, yeah. of course, of course. And I'm not, I'm not saying oh, yeah. that anybody is, 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 I mean, look at Jonathan Taylor for half the season. Like, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, no, no usage for, for any stretch of the imagination. And he was, Everyone hated him as a receiver. And then all of a sudden he was like the most efficient receiver for as far as, you know, drops catching the ball um, as any of the running backs out on the field. And I just, it would be silly for you not to get him involved in the passing game is I always, I always have a problem. I always have a problem with the, with the running back catching thing. Like anybody who's an elite athlete and isn't one of those guys, who's an asshole off the field, you can learn how to fucking catch the football. Like that's not, that's a learnable trait. And you saw that you saw that happen. The progression with ETN. I mean, even in 19, he had a ton of catches, but this year they really made an effort to showcase him in the, in the, in the passing game. And I thought he excelled well, um, and obviously when he gets the ball in his hands, he knows what to do with it. Um, I, let me argue a little bit for your floor. You like this Angelo um, for the floor of ETN anyways, is that he's a high character guy. Like he, he, all he cares about is working like in, and he doesn't, he never talks about himself. Like he doesn't like people will come up to him on like at school and stuff and be like, yo, you know, you broke this record and you have all these. And he like, he doesn't even know, like he doesn't care. He wouldn't even bring it up. He doesn't want to talk about it. Like he, he's just about the work sure. and like the culture and doing the right thing. And this dude is just, he's just a beast. And to, to have somebody that talented, be that grounded, I think, I think it's something to definitely take note of, like we talked about earlier uh, in the beginning of the show. Yeah, I think it's, it's definitely, you know, it's, that's huge, right? Um, having, you know, that type of character um, as you go through the ups and downs of being an NFL player is important. Um, the floor isn't a, for talent, that's for opportunity. That, that's for schematics. That's yeah. for where you get drafted. That's the difference is he's not versatile enough to go to all 32 NFL teams and sure, I make agree, the same, I agree. and make the same impact. But, but that's I the only reason why I have Harris. Exactly. Uh, uh, and definitely that, and ahead of him. And that's the diff. I mean, there's a, to me, there's a, there's a litany of differences between the two as players, player styles, yeah. but stylistically they're different, but ETN can, he can have 11 touches, 200 yards in a game. Mm -hmm. That's him, right? Yeah. That's him as a player where he goes is going to really dictate his early career success. But I I also can't see, you know, you said you didn't like maybe riding him into the ground, 18 touches, but if you're going to draft him at first or second overall, I do think that there's no, I don't think there's any reason not to give him that many touches. I would want to give him that many touches. Like, cause it's just, depends. I mean, I think it's, it's, it's what you want to do with running back position. I mean, either, you know, it's either you incorporate a committee yeah or you have a bell cow like yeah 
like James Robinson esque, like right. now Jonathan Taylor hope he will be next sure. year, that type of thing. But because their skill set doesn't rely, they they have another basically like they they have another toolbox basically. Mm-hmm. They they can do that and rely on not just the accelerative capabilities because that's who ETN is, man. I mean, he if he's he's a hole, gone. He's not going to create a hole for himself. That's the only thing that's going to be tough early on in his career is he's going to have to learn to create in his own. That's Will fair, he? I don't know. Fair, depends fair-ish. The, yeah. Depends on the environment he goes to. Um, but, you know, it dep- well, I, like, I don't it have the, the PFF uh, numbers in front of me, but I know there is a lot of yards after contact for sure. Uh, primarily in 19. Um, oh, the yards after. Yeah, for sure. The yards after. But I'm, I'm saying like at line of scrimmage, like. Right like manipulating defenders gain the second level with not just the singular quality, but he is a very good prospect. I can un- and understand is, that line of thinking at least. And is deserving of being a late first round pick for a team that wants to make a splash the position. All right. Well, there was some, there was a talk about committee and bell cow, but I think, there's another player later on here that's going to spur in a little bit more of that conversation. So I don't want to dive back into that. Cool. Um, hit us, hit us with the, is there, is, so is there another person in the next t- in the same tier with ETN and, and, and is there more than one guy or is this one, one more guy in it for the tier? I know you said you weren't fully done with your tiers or anything like yeah, that. Yeah. It's not complete yet, but from what I've gathered right now, there's two. 